and let the wife see that she respects her husband. Here ended up our second scripture lesson. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading of his holy words. Our sermon hymn, Amazing Grace, 280 in our hymn. Thank God. Thank God. Okay. 
and it reads, Whatever you find your hands to do, do it with your might. For there is no work, or thought, or knowledge, or wisdom in Sheol, which is the grave, to which you were going. Again, I saw under the sun, the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, nor bread to the wise, nor riches to the intelligent, nor favor to the men of skill. But time and chance happen to them all. For man does not know his time. Like fish, we are taken in an evil net, like birds which are caught in a snare. So the sons of men are snared at an evil time when it suddenly falls upon them. Let us pray. Precious Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we are thankful once again, Lord, for this time of preaching. We thank you, Father, that you have allowed me to stand before this sacred desk. I ask, Father, that you continue to help me, Lord, to preach. As we know, Father, there is no good preaching without your spirit. So we pray, Father, that your spirit might indwell me, Lord, so that I might be able to help those who are listening. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, Lord, you're my strength and my redeemer. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God's name to say, Amen. Amen. As many of you may know, in my spare time, I do photography. And, and, and I've done photography, you know, quite a bit, a lot. And sometimes, I may have as many as 1,100 photos to, to edit. But what always surprises me is that what my eyes see is not always what the camera sees. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. as, as one who has taken tens of thousands of pictures, I can say that even with the most trained eye, the camera sees so much more than I can. I can take a picture of a beautiful woman, one who looks flawlessly beautiful, not a mark, not a hair out of place. But when I take the picture, the all-seeing eye of the camera sees so much more than I did. Because every once in a while, that, that, that flawlessly beautiful woman wasn't so flawless at all. And as a matter of fact, you can sometimes find that maybe she might not have even been beautiful. With that said, I wonder how many of us are fooled by what we see? I wonder if when we look at people, do we really see them? Are we seeing the, the image that we should see? Or are we seeing what we want to see? Or what we think we see? Reminds me of when we're in Manhattan, or in Jamaica, on Jamaica Avenue, and we see somebody lying in the street. Do we see a worthless beggar, or do we see human suffering? Do we see a smelling man, or do we see what God sees? We never know what we're looking at. The Bible says that we should show hospitality to strangers, for some who have done this have entertained angels without even realizing it. The Bible tells us over and over and over again that we have to love. That we have to love even our enemies. And so the Bible also compares our walk with those who are running a race. Somehow, Christians, we get it confused. We, we confuse the two theologies, and, and we have made the race more important than the love. We're racing to be a better Christian, but we're forgetting about the love. We're trying to be first place in this race instead of just trying to finish the race. God is not looking for somebody who's fast. The Bible says that the race is not to the swift. That means that the fastest person in the race could actually be a loser. The fastest runner does not always win the race. The strongest warrior doesn't always win the battle. 
The Bible says that the wise sometimes go hungry and the skillful are sometimes not necessarily wealthy. And those who are educated don't always lead successful lives. King Solomon says, it's all decided by chance, by being in the right place at the right time. In retrospect, people can never predict when hard times will come. Can I get an amen right yeah, there, please? Yeah. You see, we're sometimes like fish caught in a net or birds in a trap. People are caught by tragedy suddenly. Suddenly. That tells me that those who are in the race with me, those people who are running alongside me, they're, they're not my opponents. We're all trying to get to the same place. They may be the people who sometimes get caught in the snare of tragedy or happenstance. Looking at the book of Ecclesiastes, the title Ecclesiastes comes from the Greek meaning indicating a person who calls an assembly. This comes from the word ecclesia, which means, or as a matter of fact, the Greek pronounced it ecclesia, which means the assembly, which we actually call the church. So it makes sense that the author identifies himself in Ecclesiastes by the Hebrew word kohileth. Kohileth is translated as preaching. Despite only having this mysterious name to identify himself, we know that this is none other than King Solomon. Amen, somebody? Mm -hmm. the, the preacher went on to call himself the son of David, the king of Jerusalem, who was increased in wisdom more than all who were over Jerusalem beforehand, and one who has collected many prophets. Beloved, the race that we're in should be run with love for our fellow man. We, we forget about that. I, I, I can't count how many times my, my ministry team and I have actually talked to homeless men and women in the street. And, and we have found that so many of them were educated. So many of them have come from prestigious schools. Or they were people with high positions on Wall Street who were now impoverished or homeless and living in the streets. I know a guy. I know a guy who's probably one of the smartest men that I know. Who was living in the streets. This guy was a, was a Wall Street. He was making tons of money. And, 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 and all of a sudden he wound up begging on the streets of the stock market. It, it can happen to anyone. People that, that knew him would give him donations. People would come to him and ask for stock tips, but they wouldn't help him. Nobody would help him. They would give him donations, but nobody would help for real. Beloved, I pray that as Christians, we're better than that. I, I hope that we don't just talk the talk, but I hope that we walk the walk as well. I know that it's not always easy being Christian, is it? Mm -mm. <laughs> in, in these challenging times, our faith is, in, in, in many times, is called into question. However, the Bible calls us to run this race with faith and integrity. With faith and integrity. Paul the Apostle says, I consider my life worth nothing to me. If only I might finish the race and complete the task that the Lord has given me, the task of testifying to the gospel of God's grace. That's the way the race is supposed to be run. That's the way we're supposed to do it. This race should be run with God and his people on our minds. We need to visit the sick. We need to call or write to those who are incarcerated. God would have us to look after his people. Can I get an amen, somebody? Amen. That's what we're supposed to do. Christians are people who imitate Christ. Sometimes we may feel like we're running our race in vain. We may feel like 
We wonder whether it's worth it all. However, the Bible tells us not to get weary in well-doing. So I say to you all, you must continue to run your race. You must finish your course so that you might receive a crown of righteousness which the Lord Jesus will give you on his return. I love that verse in Hebrews that says, Therefore, we are surrounded by a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith. Let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily tri trips us up, and let us run with endurance. The race God has set before us. The Bible in the King James calls this a cloud of witnesses, meaning that there are angels and, and those who have gone before us, and they're actually watching over us. Isn't it funny how the very thing that we're trying to avoid, which is sin, is always holding us up, is always holding us down? We, we try to avoid it, we keep running into it. You keep running into it? It is there. We cannot let sin or any traps of the fowler keep us from our assignments and the things that God has for us. See, I don't know about you, but I know that the Lord has something good for Randy. I know that, that he has something good for me. Does God have something good for you? Yes. You don't have to be a preacher. You don't have to, but you do have to be in this race. Is anybody in the race? Yes. And are we running for our very lives? Yes. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. That's how we stay in the race. You stay in the race by keeping your eyes on the prize. Our Lord Jesus showed us exactly how to run the race. Because of him, because of the joy awaiting him, Jesus endured the cross, disregarding his shame. His prize is, is that now he is sitting in the place of honor, right next to God's throne. Think of all the hostility that, that he endured while he was here. Maybe that'll give you and I a little bit of courage to, to move forward and, and, and despite the stuff that we hear, that we can just keep moving forward. God has given us this course to run, sisters and brothers. He has given us a purpose that if we will endure, if we have faith in him, we will be saved. The Bible says that in a race, all runners comp compete, but only one receives the prize. So we, we must run so that we might obtain it. Now, the title of my sermon is called Photo Finish. Photo Finishes used in horse racing. Has anybody ever played the horses? <laughs> yeah, I'm just waiting for somebody to raise their hand. <laughs> but, but the term, it, it's a term for a race that is so close that a photo has to be taken when the horses reach the finish line so that they might determine who the winner is. So you see, when I, when I get to heaven, I, I, don't, I don't want it to be a photo finish. I, I want to be able to, 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 to get there and, and let it not be any doubt that I got there. I want to be able to step across that line and, and, and know that, that I got there on my own merit because of the things that God has sent me to do. I want to finish my course. I want the Lord to say to me, well done, my good and faithful servant. Amen. Does anybody want to hear God say, well done? Yeah. Do you want God to know that you have tried to help your fellow man, that you've done everything that you could while you were here on this earth? That we tried to help him out? That we tried